not every patient will ever need third or fourth line therapy. It somewhat depends on one, the underlying disease, but also the age of the patient at diagnosis. If we think about the early progression patients, that makes up about 20% of all patients with follicular lymphoma that have progressive disease within two years. And then we think of the median age of diagnosis being in 60s, but this patient's early 60s, this, is a, this patient's a bit older. Um, and those factors come into play in terms of the likelihood of having to ever get to third line therapy. Now in my practice, an academic referral center, I do see many patients with needing third line or beyond therapy. Uh, so this is a common situation, uh, unfortunately, in our clinical practice. Fortunately for patients uh, needing third line therapy, we have a number of agents and approaches. It somewhat depends on what they've had previously. Uh, if they haven't had lenalidomide, that's still on the list. Uh, I mentioned before the ibrutumab tuxetan is a potential option for the appropriate patient. But we have an entire class of drugs now uh, called the PI3 kinase inhibitors. Uh, there are three drugs approved. The first one uh, was ibelilisib, uh, and this was evaluated in the uh, Delta study. So the PI3 kinase inhibitors, they probably have two mechanisms of action. And the initial thought was that this was primarily a drug that blocks the B cell receptor signaling pathway. PI3 kinase is part of that. However, more recent data suggests that these drugs are probably also immunomodulatory. They tend to uh, suppress regulatory T cells, probably reflected somewhat in their uh, side effect profile, uh, and may also suppress uh, myeloid-derived suppressor cells. So the actual in vivo function, it's not completely clear, but there's probably a combination of direct effect on B cell receptor signaling and some immunomodulation.